Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you for tuning in to another time of Kingdom Empowerment. I'm Pastor John Thomason. I'm just so excited that you tuned in on today. Um, <clears throat> I know God has a word for you on today to encourage you, to empower you, to uh, inspire you to do what God has called you to do. I want you to know that you have a purpose. You have a reason. And can I also tell you that you are valuable? Wait a minute. What do you mean I'm valuable? God is actually uh, uh, loves me like that. Yes, he does. Listen, God, listen, you are so valuable to God that he sent his son to die for you. Isn't that amazing? He sent his son to die for you. You know, John 3, 16 declares for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Whosoever will believe him will not perish, but have everlasting life. He values you that much that he sent his own. He didn't send no angels to come and take care of this. He sent his son to do it. Amen. He loves us like that. Glory to his name. Hallelujah. Well, you know how we do here at Kingdom of Power. We'll get right into the word. Um, last week we were talking on prayer. I'm still going to be flowing in that vein. But I, I, we're going we're gonna to go a little bit deeper. Last week we talked about the secret place of prayer, which actually is in his presence. We don't pray, you know, and the prayer does not begin until you get into his presence. How do you get in his presence? Through worshiping and praying. And then as you, when you begin to sense him, then he's present. Okay? Glory to his name. Um, open your Bibles with me to... Matthew chapter 6, verse 6. And this is the verse that we, we were, I was flowing from and God was taking me a different direction on a secret place. But it says in Matthew 6 and 6, but you, when you pray, go into your room. And when you have shut the door, pray to your father who is in secret, in the secret place. And your father who sees in secret will reward you openly, will reward you openly openly. You know, I begin to um, ask um, different questions, ask God different questions. And, I, and he led me to Matthew chapter 17 because I, I wonder, I said, God, what did Jesus' prayer life really look like? And in Matthew chapter 17, and it's also in Luke, it kind of revealed behind the scenes what took place. Now, one thing I want you to understand about Jesus, every time Jesus got done ministry, he went away. The Bible said he would always go to a solitary place or, or he would go into the mountain to pray, which means he would go to a place of elevation. Can I tell you, as you begin to worship and praise God, you it takes you to another place, another level. And as you begin to worship, it takes you into his presence. He meets you there. You know, I, I, it makes me even think about Moses when, when Moses asked to, to see um, God's glory, you know, and God said, no man can see my face and live, but there's a place by me. Come on, that secret place, right? There's a place by me. When the Bible says that he, as he went to that, he, as he went into the cliff of the rock, God reached up and tucked him up and placed him there. Come, which means that Moses went as far as he could go, and then God met him and then took him to another place. Ooh, that's good right there. But but when I when I read in Matthew chapter 17, it kind of gives us a picture of what Jesus' prayer time looked like behind the scenes. Okay? And then I'm going to come back to Matthew 6 and 6. But it says, Now after six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John his brother, and led them up on a high mountain by themselves. So they're going to a place of elevation in the mountain where Jesus was going to pray, okay? Verse 2, and he was transfigured before them. Transfigured means that he changed. The word trans means change. So he figured. He was transfigured, which means he, he, he changed form, okay? He wasn't looking like Jesus, Okay, but he was Jesus. Okay. His face shone like the sun and his clothes became as white as the light. Verse three, and behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, talking with him. 
Then Peter answered and said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, let us make here three, tabernac three tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And suddenly a voice came out of the cloud saying, This is my son, this is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear him. And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their faces and were greatly afraid. But Jesus came and touched them and said, Arise, do not be afraid. And when they had lifted up their eyes, they saw no one but Jesus only. Hmm. So, in essence, they saw what was going on with Jesus' prayer time behind the scenes. Now, I want to pull out a couple of things that happened at, 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 that, at that time because that time of prayer was Jesus' secret place with his father, with God, okay? So, so in the midst of that time, Moses and Elijah appeared to him, talked to him about what was to come, which means they were sharing with him um, what was getting ready to take place, what was getting ready to happen next. Can I tell you, when, if, you wanna, if you are in a place, if you are in a between place or or or, or where you feel like, okay, what, if, what am I going back or am I moving forward? Am I staying here? What am I to do? When you are in that between place, that's the time where you really have to really press in to God, press into his presence, seek God, you know, have that communication. What did I tell you prayer was? It's two-way communication. But prayer doesn't begin until you get in his presence. Amen? So within the Jesus' prayer time, he was, he, they were telling him about his assignment, what was going to happen, how he was going to be crucified. He was, they were sharing all these things with him. But catch this, in the midst of all that, he was transfigured, his face shone, his clothes was white, which means that in that moment, he was who he was, who, who he really was, the Christ. Come on. And Peter, James, and John was able to see you can kind of say prophetically before time because they saw him how he was going to look after the cross. Did you catch that? So what am I saying to you? When you are in the presence of God, the real you is revealed. Oh, let me say that again. When you're in the presence of God and you're speaking with him face to face, come on, the real you is revealed, good or bad. Which means even if you have some issues in your heart, if you have some things going on in your life, God, God's presence will shine the light on that thing. You see that? He'll shine the light on those areas. Listen, Jesus, his, his, his clothes was, was bright. His face was, was shining. Matter of fact, like Moses. The Bible says that, that when Moses went into the tent of meetings with God, when he got in the mountain with God, and when he came down, his face shone. Why? Because he was in, he was in, enveloped in that presence where he came back down with that presence. So Jesus was changed in that presence. He was transfigured before them. And not only that, but Peter, James, and John, their life was changed too because, see, because we read in Matthew chapter 16, Jesus asked them a question, who do men say that I am? Who do they say that I am? Catch that. Who do men say that I am? And he said, some say that you are one of the, one of the prophets. He said, but who do you say? He said, and then Peter said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus said, only my father could have revealed this to you of who I am. And then in Matthew chapter 17, which is a chapter that we're reading, he reveals himself as the Christ. You see that? So, so in, the, in that presence, in that prayer time, the real him, who he really is, was revealed to them. Glory to his name. So that same, that same way that it happened for Jesus is the same way that it's supposed to happen for us. Glory to his name. Hallelujah. Come on. When you press into that presence, 
through a time of prayer because he, the Bible says that they was going up into the mountain to pray. Can you see how powerful prayer is? To, to communicate with God. And he was able to, to, to come up there and watch Jesus behind the scenes, what goes on behind the scenes during his prayer time with God. Come on. Glory to his name. Hallelujah. He led them up on a high mountain by themselves, and he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun. His clothes became as white as the light. And behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, talking with him. Come on. He was transfigured. He was changed. Can I tell you, the only thing that will change you is God's presence. Time in his presence. Can I tell you now, every time Jesus came out of that presence, that presence never left him, but it stayed on him. So every time he preached the gospel, signs, wonders, and miracles happened because of that presence. Now let's go back to Matthew 6 and 6. But you, when you pray, go into your room, that secret place, that place that only, that place where you meet with God. Come on, that place that you meet with God it could be your car, it could be your bedroom, it, come on, it could be your favorite chair, but where, if, if there's a particular place that you just meet with God on a daily. You hear me? On a daily. He says, and shut the door, which means isolate yourself from everything where it's just you and me, you and I. Come on, Moses had the ten of meetings. So God wants you to have a ten of meetings. A, a place where you just meet with him so that y'all can have face-to-face, two-way communication in his presence. Woo, come on. What does the rest say? Pray to your father who is in secret, which means, come on, like I told you last week, prayer begins where you're in that place. It says, but let me read it again, Matthew 6 and 6. But when you pray, go into your room, and when you have shut the door, pray to your father who is in the secret place. And your father, now this is where I want to get to. And your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. So the reward of you spending time with God is God's presence being upon you. Did you catch that? So so even though you, you, you come out of prayer, that presence that you're in does not, come off you. It goes with you. Come on. That presence goes with you. That presence is upon you. Come on. When Moses came down the mountain, the Bible says that his face shone. Why? Because that same presence, come on, was upon him. Listen, in verse 5, when Jesus was in the mountain, listen to this. I'm going to prove it. While he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and suddenly a voice came out of the cloud saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. A bright cloud. Come on. God showed up and he spoke. His presence, his glory showed up. A bright cloud. Come on. When it speaks about Jesus, Jesus' face shone like the sun. Moses' face shone just like the sun. And behold, his clothes became as white as the light. He was changed. That presence was upon him. Come on, he was, he was enveloped in that presence. He spent time in it, so when every time he would come out of it, he would go preach and teach on the kingdom. He talked about the gospel of the, he brought the good news of the kingdom and signs, wonders, and miracles would happen. People were getting healed. People were getting delivered. Devils was coming out of people. Come on, um, uh, all type of sicknesses and diseases was bowing, but why? Not just because of Jesus, but because of the presence that was upon him. The atmosphere of heaven, come on. Listen, sickness and disease can't survive in heaven. There's no sick folk in heaven. You know why? Because his presence is there, and it can't survive in that. So when you get into the presence of God, 
when you get into the presence of God and when you come out, you come out empowered. Come on, empowered to do. And anything that comes in contact with that presence is healed, but it requires you to spend time. So how much time do you need to spend? Well, that's predicated on your assignment. How much of God's presence and glory do you want upon you? Well, how do I get it to stay? Well, you have to walk, you know, in a, a stay in communication with him. Uh, um, be humble. The Bible says that Jesus was lowly in heart, which means he was humble. So the presence always rested on him, and he honored his father, reverence, the fear of God. He honored his father. Even when Jesus um, taught his disciples, he said, he said, when you pray, say, our father who out in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Come on. He honored the father. Come on. Honor. Honor. Another word for honor is glory. Okay. He, he honored his father and he teaches us when we pray. That's why he says, but when you, but when, but you, when you pray, go into your room and when you have shut the door, pray to your father who is in the secret place and your father who sees in secret or in the secret place will reward you openly. The reward of you spending time with God and his presence is his presence being upon you. And listen, the, 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 the heavy lifting is done in prayer. So when you come out of prayer, his presence goes before you and takes care of all your situations. Hallelujah. But how much time does it take? Does it really matter? Let me ask you this. If God has revealed to you your assignment and you know who you are, after he has revealed that to you, you got excited about it. There's a process that you go through. You, there's a process of maturity go, that you go through. And there's a, 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 a time of, of prayer and consecration that you have to maintain, that you have to keep building and building momentum. But the question that I need to ask you is simply this. Is there enough of God's presence on you for you to fulfill your assignment for that day? that one day or even for today is there enough of God's presence on you to fulfill to fulfill the assignment that he's called you to do today well pastor John why do you say that because Jesus would go after he got done minister he would go back and spend time with his father so th th this was no one shot deal this is something that he did every day you know even the Bible says that there's one baptism but there's many in feelings you have to stay full. Amen. The purpose of you staying full is so that you can stay in power so that when you go out, you're, you're giving out. Listen, just going back to the woman with the issue of blood. When she touched him, he felt virtue come from his body. Even though she literally didn't physically touch his body, she touched his tallit, his pressure, the, the, the ZZ. Come on, the, the, the thread on the pressure, she touched that and power, virtue, went from his body and he, and he knew it. See, the purpose of, of God's presence and his power being upon your life is not so that you can go around and say that I've got God's presence on me, I'm, I'm powerful, uh, I'm, I'm anointed. That's not just it's not, not what it's for because it's self-announcing in itself. But what it's for is for you to go out and do it and touch a world. To go out and do something and touch, a, and touch the world. How do you think, think about this. How do you think the glory of the Lord is going to fill the earth as it covers the sea? You know how that's going to work? You and I. As we communicate with God and spend time in his presence, listen, we are the, the, we are the means where God, where heaven touches earth. We are the extension of Christ's ministry here on earth. You know that? We are the extension. We, God touches 
people through us. Heaven touches earth through us. We are the gates. We are a gate. Amen? Hallelujah. He touches us. He touches us. And every time Jesus came out of that place, he was empowered because of the presence. He sacrificed time. Time in his presence. Time to, 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 to spend time in that presence and get charged for the next day. Sometimes there's, there's this place where Jesus prayed all night. Why? Because he was, he was getting his assignment for that day. Listen, you worrying about the assignment for your whole life. What is your assignment for today? Did you seek him for that? Well, I'm just worrying about the assignment for your life, but you still have an assignment for that day. Who is God? Did you, did you take the time to find out who God wanted, where God wanted you to go for just today? Did you take the time to ask God, God, who, who do you want to lead me to today? What do, you, what do you want me to say to this person? Who do you want me, where, what, where do you want me to serve at today? How can I be a blessing today? Because he will empower you for the day. And I believe God does that on purpose. You know why I believe God does it on purpose? So that you come back to him to get more. So that you will, you will constantly come back and have spent time with him, had that communication, find out what your assignment is for the day, and continue to build momentum, continue to walk into the uh, walk, you know, in the fear of God, so that that presence can 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 remain on you. So when you so when you go back into His presence, you feel that He gives you more and more. And as your relationship builds, He gives you more and more. And can I tell you, there's a place in God. Come on, where 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 you walk in the place where you be like Peter when Peter walked. And in, in, in the city, the, the sun hit his shadow and people that were oppressed by demons, people that were with sicknesses and, and disease and that were lame, they were healed as they came in contact with the shadow. But, when, so, but it wasn't Peter's shadow. It was an overshadowing of God's presence that was upon him because he had spent time. Come on, there's a place in God where you can you 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 get so much of God's presence upon you where creation obeys you, when the winds and waves obey you. Come on, that happened with Jesus. Come on, when he began to, when when the storm came, he 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 got and said, Peace be still, and the winds and waves obeyed him. Come on, he walked on the water, and so did Peter walk on the water. They was with him in the mountain. That time of prayer, they had that presence on him. You know, when you read in Luke chapter, chapter 9, it speaks about um, um, when they went into the mountain. But there's a time where there was a man that brought his son to his disciples, and they couldn't do nothing. The boy had epilepsy. His father was worried about his son. He said, I brought him to your disciples, but they couldn't heal him. They couldn't do nothing. They were powerless. Jesus said, bring the lad to me. The boy gets delivered. He gets his healing. The disciples come to him privately. He said, how come we couldn't do it? How come it didn't work for us? He said, because these kind come only, come out only by prayer and fasting. Spending time in God's presence. They was ill-equipped to handle the situation because they, wasn't, they didn't stay current in their time of prayer and fasting. Can I tell you, when you're not current, you begin to lose ground. You got to stay current. You got to stay consistent. Listen, the, 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 the process of breakthrough is simply about you being persistent and consistent in your approach. Stay consistent. Keep moving. Keep moving. Keep moving. That's how breakthrough occurs. Hallelujah. You know, and in Luke chapter, in that same chapter, Peter, I believe, James and John was with Jesus, and they went into a village, right? I believe it was a Samaritan village. They didn't want to receive his ministry. They said, Lord, do you want us? 
to call down fire from heaven. Now, I don't think it's by chance that they nicknamed were sons of thunder, James and John. But they said, do you want us to call down fire from heaven? And Jesus stopped them. He said, that's not why I came. But, he, but if it could not have happened, why stop them? Well, Pastor John, that, you know, that's kind of far-fetched. Well, Elijah prayed and fire came down from heaven. When Solomon made the sacrifice, fire came down from heaven. Come on. Time, presence, come on. There's a place in God where creation responds to you. Listen, Jesus said, no one comes to the Father as they first come through me, which means that once I receive him and come on, get that relationship with him, then he says, he says, no, it's the Bible says no one comes to the Father, but first they must first come through me. In my Father's house, there are many mansions or many rooms inside of him. In his house. There are many rooms, there are many mansions. Or what I like to say, many places in him. That you only get access through one, receiving Christ and relationship. You don't give your keys to strangers. You give keys to people that you have a good relationship and that you trust. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Let me pray with you. Father, I just thank you for your people on today. Lord, I ask that you will continue to stir their hearts to, 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 to spend time with you and to get into your presence, Lord, so that they can have enough presence on them, Father God, to do what they to do what you call them to do, Father. In the name of Jesus, bless your people on today. Be with them, Father God. Lord, let your, your Lord. there's a place in you, Father God, where they can walk in divine health because they're enveloped in your presence. Make it so for them now, Lord. Stir hunger in them to seek your face, Lord. For, Lord, to seek your face means to seek after your presence. And I thank you for it now. Now, Father, there may be those that are watching that have not received the Lord. If you want to receive the Lord, the word of the Lord declares that they that call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, if you if you just repeat after me, say, Lord Jesus, I repent for my sins. I turn away from it, and I receive you in my heart right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You are in the kingdom. Now, what I would love for you, I want you to come visit us here in Port Huron at Kingdom Empowerment Ministries. Our address is 2700 Pine Grove Avenue here in Port Huron. Our Sunday services are at 12 noon, and me and my wife, Prophetess Tanya, Tanya, we pastor this, this great church, and we would love for you to come and join us on Sunday and, and possibly even be a part of our family. We know God will touch you, and you hear a word from the Lord. Amen. God bless you, and I'll see you next time for your kingdom of power. Empowerment. Blessings. Amen.